what's your greatest memory of growing up in Compton? When you think about just being from Compton? Um, just like little feuds and like going to school, you know what I mean? Like that that that, that middle school run, that high school run. Run to certain niggas, you know what I mean? For sure. Really an ops or still friends. You know what I mean? Then you go to certain schools you know you're supposed to be at, but you're a joint in your city so you can kind of get away with it. It's just certain shit that you miss on that level, you feel me? Because a nigga really adult now, a nigga grown, grown. <laughs> so go back in time on some middle school shit, through our high school, yeah. 11th grade, what? It was the times. You know what I mean? From really gang banging to shootouts to robbing and stealing. <laughs> really all type of crazy shit, but. Yeah, that's 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 for your ass right there. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, really, you saying like beginning of gang banging years and shit? I'm saying like start from high school, that sixth, seventh grade type shit. It's like niggas picking their sides and knowing what side of the track you come from, coming to this middle school or going to that middle school. So niggas know you already. And this is how you gonna approach the situation. Nah, for sure. You know, like you don't go back to that side, or you gonna let them niggas know off the dribble, nigga. I'm from that side. What's happening? Nah, for sure. And uh, it's just, that's formative for you. <laughs> Period. Yeah. When I listen to most of your music, you know, what I'm saying most of your biggest songs, I would say, will always be on some, some red, red shit. You know, what I'm saying. Oh, you to basically you said oh, I got nothing but blood. You got the power. Yeah. I thought about that shit too. Like, damn, them motherfuckers really hit. You got other shit, but yeah, I'm saying them, them, the most them, them anthems. Do you, have you ever at once seen yourself like the face of blood rap? Uh, no, because there's many more faces out here. This is just what you do to stand the fuck out. See, I don't really do too much, but I stand out just because I'm a cold character. You know what I'm saying? I just act brazy when I have to act brazy and be on my tip because it's necessary. And that shit, excuse me, stand out of self because you can't hold that back from yourself. You feel me? Uh, he, he was like, no, 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 this shit gonna come out eventually some way, somehow, and the public, the people, the fans, you know what I mean, your, your, your core fan base, they're gonna be like, damn, this nigga crazy, he burn, or that nigga tight, or I like him, or ooh, he, he just himself. It's, you get left from all different angles, so. Thanks. I'll take it and run with it. You know I personally feel like you kind of one of the upper echelon when it comes to representing blood in the rap game. Say it again. I feel like, personally, I feel like you wanted the upper echelon when it comes to repping blood in the rap game. I mean, like I say, bro, um, it's a matter how you do it. For sure. From the gate when I came, niggas went playing, joking. Yeah, you know I mean, I came with a cold crew. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Niggas still tight on the same shit. Niggas fucking around the fuck around period. But we adults now, like I just said. And we about to bag our family and proceed and elevate, you feel me? So. If you want to come between that, whether it be blood, crib, mess, or whatever, it's yeah. going to be about that. But sure. in the blogs and the white people, etc., they're going to be like gang banging. No, nah, it's about they came to my bag. You feel me? No, nah, I definitely feel you. I feel you. I be, I be listening to, as I'm listening to you, I hear the emphasis on like, yeah, we grown now. Yeah. You ever heard of this dude named Charleston White? Say who? Charleston White. Charleston White. He's like a writer or something? Nah, he's a uh, a community activist from Fort Worth, Texas. Who's... Hey, nah, I can't say that. For sure. Okay, so he I interviewed him before, but he's really big. You'll probably hear of him after this. But, you know what I'm saying, he was a crip. And I interviewed him once, and in his interview, he said... This is something you join as a little bitty boy. And the reasons you join is for boyhood reasons. Right? Most niggas join at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You join 17, you're a little late. You're a late bloomer. But most niggas join with this boyhood value system. So if I make this decision at a boy, and I'm growing up over the years and evolving, then I start shedding things. Some things I start shedding off. Man, I can't fit these same shoes. So why would I hold on to something that I joined when I was a boy. I really didn't know what I was doing. I done it out of pain. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, in a sense, yeah, because you can't go your whole life getting into trouble, fucking up your name, in and out of jail, catching bullets, you feel me? 
somewhere you gotta elevate and, and, and know like this shit ain't this shit ain't where it's supposed to be at this time or this age because you done had your little run, your little 12, 15 years, you might got 20 years because you're a cold nigga, you feel me? But in reality, you got forever because they gonna always know where you're from. Niggas gonna still try to, try to test you when you're probably 45 and just, I'm not in that lane of them looking for me being on my ass like when I was 19, 20, 21, 22, you feel me? But in reality, still to this day, I'm the same nigga. So I gotta watch my ass with girls, and it might be one little young nigga on the other side might want to try something. So yeah, always stay aware. You feel me? Not for sure. Yeah, your eyes on the swivel. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. And the re the reason I ask you that question because I watch some of your other interviews, and the main thing I take from most of your interviews, like No Jumper, Vlad, all the people, is that you always speak about like, yeah, I'm grown now. It's different now. Like. I was wild when I was young. Yeah. You always speak about that that growth. So I, I, I really wanted to get your perspective on that. Do you ever feel like attaching that that kind of street representation to the transition out of the streets? For like the for the people watching you? It's it's already attached. You know what I'm saying? It's already has one because like I told somebody the other day, a nigga can never leave the streets because the streets is where you gotta go promote your song again. You gotta go market yourself in these streets. You some say these different states, these different uh, regions. So on that level, bro, like you might run into a nigga that's disliking for whatever reason, or he mad you got bitches, or he mad you got more money, or he wake up mad, whatever. But he start beef at that moment. That's something you can't run from in these streets, but you can't prevent from busting a mission in your hood. You see what I'm saying? So. A nigga ain't changing shit. They gonna be on the same thing. Just think smarter. Like I say. Yeah, you're grown now. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about none of that. As long as, like I said, you only get in my way about my bag and, I, and you don't fuck with my family my, and my section, my crew. Like, don't watch your business, you feel me? Everybody is gonna do what they're gonna do regardless of this world, period. But, shit, I'm, 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 I'm gonna do what the fuck I wanna do and have a whole my thing. Nah, for period. sure. Just like that. So, yeah.